And much of the film is in Japanese. Tell me how that all worked for you as the director and working with Japanese actors. Yeah, I mean, that certainly was one of the challenges. The first thing to say is the Japanese cast were delightful, such nice actors, and I think it would have been so much harder if Tak and Yosuke and Aoi had not been such delightful people. Yosuke, for example, who plays the younger brother Yuto, is a megastar in Tokyo. We went there and he was on this fantastic, huge Givenchy billboard. He's Johnny Depp, basically, in, in Japan. And we would never have known that, except that we went and saw it. So to meet him, he's just humble and, uh, you know, he's one of the hippest people I've ever met. Joe Barton, the writer, had doesn't speak any Japanese. So he wrote all the dialogues in English. They were then translated professionally by some translators into Japanese. But even then, when they came to set, often the Japanese actors would feel differently about a particular word or phrasing or there are lots of idioms. Like Joe's writing is very kind of, it's full of idioms and rhythm and, you know, he's very, it's very, very important to him and, and to the show itself, to the tone of the show that, that we, might, you know, preserve this kind of language. But it was incredibly hard to do across a, a divide into a different language because that stuff doesn't translate often. So we had interpreters. We were always, whenever we were shooting a scene with Japanese dialogue, we had a native Japanese speaker on set with us. So the process of directing would be, I would rehearse the scene and then I would watch them do their scene in Japanese. It was actually surprising to me how much I could judge a performance, even though I didn't speak the language they were speaking. I mean, I had the translation in front of me, so I knew what they were saying. The way for me to sort of judge whether a performance had been authentic and, and truthful was to see whether the other actor who did speak Japanese was buying it. If they felt to each other they were playing as authentic and truthful, that was kind of my yardstick for the way that the fact that the performance itself was then authentic and truthful. And I did, by the end, was able to give performance notes even though they were speaking in Japanese, but I was also very careful about it. We had enough time in Giri 2 to do versions, so often if you know there wasn't, we weren't entirely sure about a translation, we would try two versions. And the problems and challenges of working in a different language don't stop with the shoot because the editors have to assemble the show without speaking Japanese, which was excruciatingly difficult because they've got to judge the performances they like without speaking the language again. And they often would pick a performance that they liked because of the intensity of it or the, or the particular kind of truthful feel of it that had a, a stumble in it or a, a word wrong. And then we had to, you know, there was a lot of kind of hand wringing in post-production about, okay, well, this is the best performance, but actually what he says is this. Is that a deal breaker? Is that not a deal breaker? Can we keep this one because we like it better? An editor often cuts, but it's very hard to cut a speech if you don't know what each sentence is. Mm-hmm.